Uh, there were a lot of fans asking last night about Trey Flowers. I know a month ago you had said weren't sure if he'd be able to come back and why the Emmanuel injury. Um, is he? Is it possible yeah. he might return, or would you expect yeah. he would be out of the year? So, so that's one thing. So yeah, Trey I, no, um, yeah. There's no, there's no change. Uh, um, I think I can quote uh, McGruber on this. Okay, and that's never ever say never ever. But um, yeah, no change. So out at least for the foreseeable future. Yeah, very yeah. Good. And then uh, obviously Jason Sanders has a very good body of work over five NFL years. He struggled this year. Have you and Chris and Danny decided? Uh, if you will bring in kickers just to take a look, see, or is Jason Sanders your kicker unquestionably moving forward? Oh, he's given me no reason to to believe that he um, uh, he won't get the things corrected. Um, so uh, we're we're always doing that, regardless um, with regard to every position, to make sure that you are. Um, uh, up to speed on your contingency plans because you're only one soft tissue away, especially at those positions. But um, I have no reason to think, uh, you know, first and foremost, uh, Jason holds himself um, uh, uh, to a high degree of scrutiny and, and you know, has high demands of himself, so he, has, he expects more. But um, it'd be one thing if, if he'd given me any reason um, to think that he can't get it corrected. So... Until he uh, proves me other proves otherwise, um, we're, we're we're feeling good about where we're at with him. We've reported the news on Emmanuel Ogbo, but uh, to hear it from you and uh, just whatever you can elaborate on his injury. Um, yeah, it's, it was uh, very unfortunate for um, him. He's, you know, the for the individual um, makes it it sucks because he. Um, is one of the type of veteran players that didn't take his investment by the um, organization lightly, and he's. It just seems like once we, um, he just had hiccup after hiccup. Um, it's just unfortunate luck this season. So, um, with regard to health, and he, you know, his injury occurred on a play that um, was really fired me up. He's really set the edge on the. Um, right tackle and stayed in for a play because um, it just felt weird and um, yeah so it's very unfortunate feel terrible for him um, you know that's, a, that's the hard part of um, being invested and being along on the journey with some of these guys but um, you know I'm just going to have to have uh, what what's occurred all season at every position have to have guys step up and um, uh, and account Count for his production and his uh, missing voice in the locker room. Uh, update on Keon Crossing? Um, haven't talked to Kyle about him specifically today. I do not have an update on it. Um, but uh, yeah, this I guess uh, I guess I can further update you, you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> we'll call or, or we'll come up here. At Just, be happens, so. Just be patient. Just be patient. Um, Mike, when you see um, receivers blocking downfield like we've seen this season and specifically yesterday, what does that tell you about their desire and, and their responsibility, how seriously they take it? Um, it takes – it tells me that they're trying to win football games and they get it. Um, it tells me that they are being um, – they're being coached right, and it tells me that they're um, – uh, that they're approaching the game the right way. You know, it's it, it, if you're short-sighted, you can think, okay, I'm a receiver. I get paid to, um, you know, catch footballs, and that's very short-sighted um, investment because, you know, you're also as a receiver depending on a lot of people to do the right things for you to get receptions. Um, yeah, you got to sauce people up and do cool receiver stuff, but you also have to have a a line executing appropriately, um, and you have to have a quarterback executing appropriately, and that's all easier on both those parties um, when you're able to run the ball in, in this league. If you want to run the ball with success, um, it, you can't. It's non-negotiable. You got to have receivers 
play that way and saw some guys make some impact plays and get um, involved. And it's a if you're trying to work, win, play good offense at a high level and you're trying to make sh- – you have the aspirations to, um, you know, be a really good, really good group in the league. You better run block, and it it changes the energy and the mentality of a football team when that's the case. So, um, I'm glad you mentioned that because it's not hap- happenstance. Not only did we get our first um, explosive touchdowns, we all right? Chuck you up. I know. I get emotional with uh, football, too, all the time. It's not a big deal. Um, but it's, it's not a coincidence. You're, you're breaking these long touchdowns um, because guys are committing to the, the, the process and, and having the desire and determination not to have the person that they're uh, in phase with be a part of the tackle. It's cool football. Like yesterday in the locker room when we were talking <clears throat> to the team, you kind of challenge the players, so to speak. Uh, you use a phrase, um, make 2022 one of those years you remember forever. Hey, dude, that's, how are you in there? I have ears everywhere. Best horse. Yeah. This guy. Um, what kind of boundaries. <laughs> we, we need boundaries. <laughs> okay, so. What constitutes a year that you would remember forever? Um, when you go through things, when you're fully invested, um, contrary to popular belief, you can't really control, uh, ultimate outcomes. You can't, you, you, and, and I'm not worried about that. It, it's the, uh, I've, I've learned a life lesson in my experience that the, you get out exactly what you get in or you put, put in you and, um, you'll make 2022, uh, memorable if you and a um, collection of other individuals decide to invest um, as much as they've ever invested in in their craft uh, because in that experience there's highs, lows uh, there's relationships but ultimately I know this for a fact you get the most out of whatever you got and you'll remember that uh, and and so I make it less tangible or like hey, um, a proclamation about we will do X if it's more about um, you know if you reflect on some of the things that you've done uh, in team sports, um, some of the guys speak on it candidly, guys that have won stuff, you you and guys that have gone along have gone to the playoffs, gone and done stuff in the playoffs, and et cetera, et cetera. It, it, the common denominator is that, uh, you know, players decided to put team first and individual stuff second, and and you invest and you go through hardship and you go through triumph, and you become closer as a team, and, and it kind of defines you as as a human being as well, so... That, that that's all that it's the 100 percent investment um which uh so far i've been very happy with and uh but it's a it is a um it's a long it's long distance running it's not sprint so we still have a lot of the race to go austin jackson was active uh but didn't play do you see that as a plan going forward or was it more so just uh uh, he was available if someone got hurt and maybe he could start on the other side of the bye? No, we were hoping not to play him because we we felt that good about him being able to uh, really we, – we felt like if we could get through this game, that we just loved his progress and he could not have a setback. Um, we, we'd be out of the woods as best we can control um, with with that stuff. So he was there. Uh, for emergency, and uh, we, we were hoping not to have to play him, and we're fortunate not to. Coach, uh, this is the bye week for you all. I know you get some time off. Um, do you have plans to visit a high school game? Have you had a chance to try a public sub or 
Just curious of some of the things that you plan on. Um, yeah, I have, I have, uh, I'm still working on the phrase, or the, how to coin the phrase, but it's half regen, half dad. Okay, so it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not creative enough right now. I've, you know, I emptied the tank this, this first half of the season, so I've, all of my wit's gone. Um, but, uh, no, I think it's, I think it's an important, um, just philosophically how I see going about um, business. And, you know, you're competing against people um, all the time uh, within your own personal, uh, um, within your building structure, within the, the people in your position group, within uh, and around the league. And to separate yourself and how you go about stuff, uh, it's the intentionality and being deliberate. Uh, and, uh, but... The thing is, you can't to to do that the right way. It's an exhausting process. It is to deliberate practice is a brain drain, um, and uh, in order to do it the appropriate way, you have to have deliberate rest as well. So uh, I'm a leader by example, and I'm going to show these guys how to rest my butt off, and then. Uh, uh, when I'm not asleep, I'll be, I'll be dadding and, uh, and husbanding. I'll have some honeydews. I will do my chores because I won't want to be in the doghouse. I might, I might kind of like at the end of the week, just kind of like skirt some of those honeydews, just knowing that there won't be ramifications because I'll be back at work. So, but until then, I'm all right. Mike, Alec Ingold played easily his highest uh, number of snaps yesterday on the day when the running game had its best outing of the season. How Correlation or causation? Um, what say, what say you? No, I think uh, I I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, we knew going into the game that we were going to um, have him on the field a lot. He he provides a very um, physical presence. Um, and it's adjusting to playing, you know, he's played fullback before, but that, what that means and how we're utilizing his skill set is a little different than he's been used before in his career. Uh, a little more versatile, you're just, he's got a lot more running. He's um, not as much closed quarter stuff. Uh, and I thought he did a tremendous job, um, and he's starting to come into his own in, in that regard. So he stepped up to the plate we needed him to. Um, and he he's a tone setter um, for our football team that we count on week in week out um, to establish uh, uh, and help establish a, a physical style of play. So uh, I was happy to see him be put in some um, advantageous situations, and he took advantage of me yesterday. Mike, the physicality of Jeff Wilson's run style is that something you think this offense was missing over the first eight weeks of the season? Um, I think that it's something that uh, benefits the offense. I'm not sure if I would say necessarily missing, um, but we it 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 definitely adds a, uh, another dimension. So I, I guess I, we weren't necessarily lacking it, but any with a guy like him that brings energy every time he touches the ball. I think that is infectious. I think it does help the team. Um, whether or not, I don't think necessarily we're missing it, but I think um, it does change a little. Uh, there's residual effects to other eligibles, just, uh, not just um, not just the, uh, the, the running back room and not just the, the offense. There's residuals to the whole team as well. I think I think they um, he's uh, he electrifies the defense too because when you're on the sidelines and you see someone um, punishing defenders and straining um, and doing everything they can for each and every yard, it, it makes every eligible better. Um, and I, I think uh, you know him him and Raheem play off each other extremely well. They always have. And I thought you saw some uh, pretty cool stuff from Raheem, too, uh, playing off of uh, Jeff's energy. So it's one of those 
things that's not necessarily like quantifiable. Like there's no stat that's going to say this is what we're getting with Jeff Wilson as much as. They're like, exactly right. I was trying. It's made me so happy because I couldn't articulate it. I really couldn't. And, but then when we were talking about it, I was like, just wait, guys. Just wait. This is. Um, I was very excited because I, I knew we could benefit for something. It wasn't necessarily that we were missing, but he could add something that could take, that could do more than just whatever his stats are. And that, uh, whatever that, the, the Jeff, we got a case of the, the Wilsonitis, I think, maybe. Uh, the whole team, uh, uh, the whole team benefits from it, and ironically, or is it, is it ironic? Is the correlation or causation? But Cedric Wilson Jr. also had his most physical game, so maybe the Wilsons just their long lost brothers that rubbed off on each other. I don't know, um, but I but I think that it is something that um, our game can continue to grow in all aspects. I think it was the most physical that we played on both sides of the ball. I think Jeff Wilson contributed to that. Um, but I think we're all just kind of growing in how we how we play um, our style of football. And there's a, a lot of people uh, putting some more physical stuff on tape that it's only going to help the Dolphins. Coach, going back to your uh, your daddy duty this weekend or this week, and I saw your shoes yesterday. I had a picture of you and your daughter on them. I was curious kind of the behind the scenes of how that came to be and just how special it was to have that picture oh. with your daughter on your shoes. So she can't really talk, but she's a savant at painting. And she does not know. <laughs> um, that, that was gifted to me. Um, that was a surprise on, 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 on Saturday, but... Um, you know the, I, I have people on top of people. Or yeah, surprise on Saturday, I'm getting um, uh, my haircut on Friday by Steve, and you guys might know, but he's and then he's like, I got a present for you on Saturday. I said cool, didn't expect that. Salute to service, which um, you know is 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 very meaningful to me. I I, I very much appreciate it, but then to have. Uh, a picture of myself and my daughters, like, what world am I in? This is unbelievable. Um, so then I went down the hall and checked with the, my regulatory advisors to make sure that I would not be violating NFL rules um, to get the uh, – and, and I think I passed all tests, and so then I put them on, and it, it, was, a, it was a really cool thing to be able to support um, an unbelievable cause for, you know, people that sacrifice – um, really everything they have for our, our, in a selfless manner for our way of life. Um, and then to have that on top of a painted picture of, of my daughter who, when I saw her on the sidelines before the game, um, they were talking about her. So I pointed and she goes, Ayla, which is her name. She said, so she recognized herself on a shoe and I almost, you know, I almost just broke down crying before the game. So it was pretty cool. Uh, and it, it, I felt very fortunate to be a part of it. Um, and those uh, those shoes are, I, I I took them from the game home, and I'll probably be wearing them doing dad duty all week while I take out the trash.